uh, rusty and totally out of the loop as far as getting into that mental mindset of, of okay, let's go. It's just the best. Mm -hmm. I okay, everyone, the art of the time trial. Here's the deal. So we're not basketball players. We're not hockey players. We're not, uh, let's say, reliant on a big tournament to carry forth our, uh, our sport that we love. So we can go run a time trial really whatever we want and I'll explain in more detail what a time trial is, how I approach time trials and how they're important for our training, especially in times like these when there's no races happening around the world. And by the way, uh, we're pausing, no time trial today. It snowed last night. I had a feeling, it, well, I didn't have a feeling. I, I watched the weather and uh, sure enough, it did snow, not much, but therefore I'm gonna bump the time trial to tomorrow. So Sunday morning when you're watching this, uh, Cherry Creek Path in Denver, uh, I think I'm going to start around about 9 a.m. I don't want it to be freezing out, so I want the sun to come up a little bit and make sure all this uh, snow is melted off. All right, good morning, time trial. Here we come. Okay, getting ready for my time trial shakeout run. I'm gonna do strides at the end of the run to get the legs ready for the turnover tomorrow. Yes, taking out the, taking out the Brooks Glycerin 18s, quickly becoming uh, one of my favorite easy day shoes. And thank you, Michael. Michael's showing you his dog. Uh, so anyway, and yes, remember yesterday we talked about running gear. So here we go. You know this, the flip belt, the buff, my new compressed sport hat that I'm loving so much, and yes, my territory run company socks, so. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's not a race tomorrow, but I'm ridiculously excited. So it's just keeping that rhythm of training and racing, in quotes, part of life in order to remain connected to our past and the old normalcy that uh, we all used to have. It's just, uh, it's really, it's enthralling. Yeah, I just said it, it's enthralling. All right, here we go. Strides. Here we go, here we go. All right, back from the run. Uh, but before we dive into that, I have an idea. And I've been mulling it over for about a week now. And because it keeps coming back to me and keeps coming back to me, especially when I'm out running like today, I, I couldn't stop thinking about this idea. I'm not quite ready to announce it to everyone yet. Stay tuned. It does connect to a tweet that I sent out earlier today. If you follow, follow me on Twitter, uh, you can go back and, and read it. But uh, I'm excited about it, especially during these very difficult times. And I'm going to go inside. It's, it's a big idea, and I, want to, I need to talk it over with True Love first. So we'll go inside here in a minute uh, and talk with her. But first... Today's run, seven miles, eight minutes a mile, nice and easy. Uh, getting ready for the time trial Time trial tomorrow, followed up uh, by a couple strides back and forth, back and forth. Overall, the legs feel pretty peppy, especially at the beginning of the run. Toward the end, I didn't feel quite as fresh, but uh, I'm excited for tomorrow morning, 13.1 miles on the Cherry Creek Path. I'm going to start, there's a Conoco gas station on Monaco, in case you're familiar with Denver, and then I'm going to head uh, north, uh, yeah, northwest toward downtown Denver, and I'll get, a, I'll get about 11 miles in on the Cherry Creek Path, and then I'm going to connect with the Platte River Trail, and then head uh, kind of northeast on the, on the uh, Platte River Trail 
toward basically uh, I-70. And anyway, that's going to be a wrap. I'm going to I'm going to run until I hit 13.1 miles. Essentially, remember, shout out to all the race directors who put in a lot of work and time closing roads, closing, uh, finding courses that we all can run on that keep us safe. And uh, anyway, that's my decision for tomorrow's time trial. And now remember I said this about a month ago with respect to tune-up races. Before a big peak race, uh, if you can work it into your schedule, doing a tune-up race is a really great idea. And what's the goal of a tune-up race? To get your leg turnover going in a race environment and also for me to get myself mentally prepared for that race day experience. So I like to run tune-up races, like I said, three to four weeks out from a peak race as a rust buster, all right? Get those legs going, get in that mental mindset for running fast, racing fast, and again, that three to four week window, it was gonna be the, er in fact, it was today. Yeah, was it today? Yes, it was gonna be today in real time in Irving, Texas. The race was canceled. It was and now remember, on the mental side of being a runner, I think, personally, at least, you know, talking about my mental strategy and my mental health even, is as runners, having that opportunity to exert ourselves and to dig deep and to frankly go a little bit to the pain cave. Like, I don't know, we're a little strange. We, I'm just gonna say it, like we, we kind of have to enjoy pain as runners uh, because a lot of people don't like to run because why? It kind of hurts, whether it's our bodies, whether it's our breathing, like the, the lactic acid building up in our legs. Uh, but as the more you run, the more you come to uh, yearn a little, at least I do, yearn a little bit for that, um, finding that threshold of our pain. I don't know, I'm talking a little crazy here, but anyway, so tomorrow in the time trial, not only is it going to be physically hard, but it's going to be that mental exertion that frankly, when was the last time I raced everybody? I don't even know. What Have I raced in 2020? I don't think I have. Was it... Was it the world mountain running? I know I'm missing something. I'm, am I going crazy? I think it was the the world mountain running championships in Argentina. I th that's that's blowing my mind. So anyway, I am raring and ready to rock and roll. And to and now listen, there's no one gonna be around me. Oh yeah, by the way. So as far as filming the time trial tomorrow, I'm gonna go fast. Like I am approaching this time trial as a race, just so you know. In fact, so much so that I'm laying out my singlet uh, tonight, I'm laying out my socks, my racing shoes, um, everything that I'm gonna wear, just like I would be doing the night before if I was staying you know, in a motel like I did for the New York City Marathon. You lay out all your, your gear the night before just to make sure you have everything ready to go. So tomorrow, because it's just me, social distancing, no one's gonna be there to film me. Unfortunately, I would love someone to be there on the bike you know, filming me, that would be amazing for all of you to, you know, to share the experience, but it just can't happen right now. So I will be carrying this little teeny tiny camera that is struggling right now. Uh, it's the InstaGo, Insta360 Go, the gyro is off, but I'll get as many shots as I possibly can. It weighs about as much as a quarter. Uh, so the GoPro is just a little too much weight, believe it or not. I don't like it um, as far as when I'm really running fast. Uh, so this will be my, my camera that I use for filming tomorrow for all of you. And one more point on the art of the time trial is that especially during these crazy times with all the races being canceled, it's, it really is an opportunity to dig a little deeper and to mimic race day so that when races return, and they will return, um, we are not uh, totally uh, rusty and totally out of the loop as far as getting into that mental mindset of, of okay, let's go, let's, let's go see what we can do, whether it's chase down a PR, push ourselves harder than we've ever pushed ourselves. And so that's what I'm doing. And hopefully uh, we all can return to racing sooner rather than later. But if we can't, again, I think building time trials into our training blocks is gonna be, um, for me, is gonna be of necessity, okay? All right, no question of the day in the studio. We'll get that to you inside, but let's go. I gotta go talk to True Love about this idea. All right, come on now. A twig. Uh, uh, you guys are having fun out here. Good job. All right, I gotta go chat with Mama. Those boys are having fun out there.
Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so Han, I'm not ready yet to okay. let YouTube family know what my idea is. I, we need to talk first. Okay. Sound good? Oh yeah. All right, so sorry, sorry. Oh. We'll be back in a little bit. And 15 minutes later, okay. <laughs> handing, handing the mic off to true love. Han, what do you think okay. of the idea? I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's profound. I think it's as it should be. I think you're brilliant. Right. And I think I'm I'm inspired and proud to be part of that idea. True love's on board. Yeah. Two thumbs way, way up there. So everyone, it sounds like but we're not I, I gotta work out the details. Bottom line, it's all about seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. All right, that is as the boys said, that is the uh, focus of this next idea. All right, so all right. Well done, sir. So yeah. it's like and we have something very special on the channel, yeah. meaning it's a YouTube family. And I, it's like family. we interact with each other in the comments. We support each other on Strava and Instagram and uh, kudos everyone's runs up. And now this is kind of that next step where we can really make a difference. Oh. And it's, you know, 68,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah, that's no joke. And so it's like... It's grow and so there's power in our YouTube family. I love that. My mom always says we have a big Irish family, and she says the good thing about a big family is when the troubles come, there are more of us than there are of the troubles. I That's what it. I think of I with this it. idea. All right. Whoo. All right. Stay tuned for the details.